believe we have Teddy Kekstadt in the dojo. Teddy, are you there? I am here. How are you doing, Teddy? Um, I'm, I'm interested to see what you have for us. You know, we have crude oil inching just slightly higher. Of course, last time you and I spoke, um, we were much higher, but maybe around $86 uh, for the contract. Um, you, have, you have bonds uh, down in price a little bit. Uh, just interested to see what you're looking at today. Sure, sure. Um, well, obviously, crude is down a little bit right now. You know, um, last Friday, we had a really volatile trade in uh, crude oil with a really erroneous uh, spike. I don't know if it was just algos or what exactly um, that really propelled that, you know, spike high before the uh, weekend close. Um, now, we've had a nice bounce off the low that we set on, uh, what was it, on uh, Monday. And I think right now we're just kind of digesting. Uh, the overall trend is definitely a bull. Um, I, I like the fact that we we kind of digested over the last week and a half. This is a nice correction here. I think that the velocity, the slope of the trend was too steep two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Now it's evened out, and I think we're pretty much on track to make a run for new highs. And I think we could probably get as high as ninety one to ninety one half area over the next. Now I'm not saying over the next couple of days or sessions, but I would say that probably by the middle of May, I would. It's pretty reasonable that we should be trading in the lower ninety uh, area. Right on. Absolutely. And, you know, I think you have this, I think the world on a, on a fundamental level, I think the world's still trying to figure out where things are going to shake out, right? You have things going on with the Venezuelan uh, embargo. You have Mexico uh, decreasing the amount that they're going to export. And then, you know, conflict is still continuing in the Middle East for the foreseeable future. You have Ukraine hitting massive Russian uh, refineries. I didn't speak on yesterday. I wanted to get to it, but but you know how the Russians get that out and how that affects the price of oil globally as well. So it'll be interesting to see uh, kind of what happens. Um, what are you looking at regarding you know currency pairings of anything at all? Of course, you have the dollar coming down a little bit at 105.79. Mm -hmm. We're up a little bit this session, um, but you know this is down from the general 107, 106 area we've been seeing the uh, the past few sessions. Okay, well, you know, the Tiger Forex report, we had a uh, buy signal in the euro that was triggered last week, and we're still riding that uh, trade right now. Right now, I, we're um, above the entry price, which was at $1.0672. We're trading at $1.680. We were trading above 107 yesterday. Um, this week, there was a chance to buy the price at a better end, um, price than our entry price, and, you know, if, those, if anyone did get in there, the reward to risk ratio is definitely higher. I think that we can hit our first bullish target, which is right around 107.49, with the extreme being 107.93. I think once you get to that first target level, if you're already long, it'll be time to raise your stops and, re and be ready for a, a sharp pullback, especially with the way the 10-year and the 30-year are trading right now. So, um, But I think, yeah, right now, over the next probably a few sessions into next week, we could get into that area. And then I would say that's probably where you're going to start to see a little bit of trouble for the euro. You know, um, Overall, the euro is in a big wide range trade, so I don't expect a lot of trending or um, major swing trades. But if you do want to have some action with that, we can take a look at some of the uh, lesser big pairs like the Canada, the Aussie and stuff like that, because there's some moves going on there. The yen is just hovering below its highs. It's going to be really hard to play it to the long side or look for any really big jump. Um, not unless there's a bit if oil rallies again and yields go up. Yeah, we'll get, we can definitely see um, the U.S. dollar yen go up maybe up to the 155. 156 area but un unless we have a major push in either of those markets and i don't think that's going to happen yet for another week or so um but if you want to look at the uh us dollar canada real quick i can give you some levels there the low that we set this morning which was just a little bit off of uh, a little bit lower than yesterday's low came into a nice support area I think that you're probably going to find a basing there, so I I would be in a look to be in the in the buy break scenario for the U.S. dollar Canada mm -hmm. somewhere in this dollar thirty six to dollar thirty six excuse me dollar thirty six half to dollar thirty six twenty five right now it's at thirty seven even so if it bobbles around this area it, it may the, the low may already be in I don't want to try and pick a bottom or anything like that we got to see how the trading goes through this week and and the other thing is we don't have any numbers this week uh, the yeah. only thing we have is unemployment claims. The, the only real big number was the EU um, consumer confidence number on Monday right. uh, at 9 o'clock, and since then there's nothing. So unless unemployment claims, which were probably going to be a little bit lower, come out drastically different or than expectations, uh, we're set up for sideways going into next week. So I wouldn't expect any big follow-through. Once again, I think you have a nice bounce here for the U.S. dollar Canada short term, and let's see, NZD, USD, New Zealand. 
that hit some nice support a few sessions back. I think it's got a good chance of it, it's a sell rally forecast. I think you have a little bit more to the upside. And another reason I go with that one is because of the Australian dollar, U.S. dollar. Um, it spiked up into some key resistance today. I think you can probably see it try and test those highs one more time over the next few sessions. And then it could be where it just starts to digest a little bit, and then it'll probably start to fall back on support again. So for swing trades, I think you have some potential in those markets. I'd be really careful with the euro as far as follow through. Yeah. Um, and I can give you the pound real quick. Sure. One last scenario there. We set a nice low two days ago. Uh, I think that's a nice lower low. I think it's still a sell rally forecast. I'd be careful. I'd wait for it to get probably up to the 125 to uh, almost 126 even area before you start to sell it, um, just because otherwise you can get caught in the chop zone. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and folks, again, if you go to TFNN.com, we have it over in newsletters here. This is the Tiger Forex Report by Teddy Kekstadt. He releases this every Monday, at least before the open, and... Uh, the insights are just awesome. And Teddy, I said it last time. Thank you. I'll give you a call after this, but we need to figure out something with a webinar or something for you because the, the one you had done uh, last year was, was super solid. And guys, you can always go uh, to our services and we have all of our um, you know more recent uh, webinars archived, including Teddy's. So, well, we uh, are working on it. It's gonna, we're going to have a live trading event coming up sometime in the next month or so. Love it. Yeah, can't so. wait for that. Can't wait for that at all. Teddy, uh, thank you so much for joining us. That was uh, insightful, as always. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. We'll, we'll talk to you uh, to Monday, I guess, right? You're welcome, Jacob. So, take care. Take care now, Teddy.